o'clock. Technology is everywhere. We live in a digital world. Let's call it Digitopia. First up, we sent our news report to Sky Taylor to California with some future technology. Over to you, Sky. Thank you, Chris. This is a very exciting day for me as I'm going to get into the MFT, or the Ministry of Future Technology. Inside these walls are plans, models and prototypes for every technology of the future. Tech companies bring their tech here to get it modified, looked at and even to help market the product. I have here with me now the head of MFT, Eleanor Fence. Eleanor, it's a pleasure to meet you. You too, Sky. So, Eleanor, what's your job involved here? It must be hard work. Basically, I'm the head of media, so I have to filter through all the applications that come in and see which ones have a future. You're also the head of this. What does that mean? Our little bits here and there, testing gadgets and finances, that sort of stuff. What sort of gadgets and companies come to you for help? Well, recently we've had quite a lot of tablet companies. The Apple iPad was a massive success. And as companies see that that was such a big success, they want to be just like that. So we've had quite a lot of tablets. Can you tell us about any future gadget, gadgets coming out? Well, there's one um, with contact lens, which has liquid crystal display technology. And basically, you can see basic symbols on there, like a dollar sign or a cat's face. In the future, you could be able to read emails or even watch television on there. Thank you, Sky, reporting from the MFT in California. Next up, advances in technology and inventions have been going on throughout the years. From the wheel making things easier to move, to the iPad and the very latest on modern technology advances. To tell us more, we have an expert, Cara Work, in the studio to tell us more about how technology has revolutionised the digital world we live in today. Cara, good morning. Good morning, Chrissy. So, just how is our world being changed by the tech revolution? Well, Chris, our world is being changed in many more ways than just one. For example, teachers in schools are now using the iPads during their lessons and storing all their files on there, so, on there, such as their register and lesson plans. These make lessons and access to logging into the computer and it's much easier than logging into the computer and they're generally more enjoyable teaching experience. The apps you can get also make teaching and teaching pupils easier and more efficient. And what about travelling and getting around? Has that been affected by all of this? I most definitely. Stuff like GPS systems give us so much information now, from the speed you are going at and how long it will take to get there, to the traffic on the M12 and the nearest petrol station. They can tell you just about everything you need to know when you're out and about. In the future, they even plan to show you the position of every car on the road around you, which is a potentially life-saving function, especially for big lorries and cab drivers. And the vehicles themselves? Japan is genius when it comes to inventing fast, eco-friendly means of transport. The bullet train, for example, goes to incredible 149 to 186 miles per hour, which is the fastest train ever. Future car designers are also undergoing the process of coming, of their ideas coming to life. It's all very exciting. Next, have you got anything to say about video games after all? They've come a long way from Pong to Call of Duty Ops. Black Ops 2. Advances in video game technology is enormous, bigger than anyone could have predicted. The graphics look so realistic, especially on the Xbox and PS3 big sellers, such as you mentioned earlier, Call of Duty Black Ops and GTA. And now, with the introduction of 3D TVs and graphics, you can feel like you're really in the game, even if I must say so myself. The experience is like no other. This is even being introduced to the real world. Simulators to try and recreate the feeling of flying an airplane to make pilots more prepared for what they're going to face in the sky and the possible outcomes that could occur. Hopefully, because of what they've practiced in the simulator, they can manage it. These simulators are the very highest in technology that in, in that field. Pilots have said it's almost exactly like flying a real thing and they're well prepared to fly a real plane for the first time. That's incredible. Now I have to ask about smartphones, as they are taking over the world along with tablets. Most certainly. They are well and truly taken over. You can do almost anything on them, like check, your, like check Facebook or even turn on and off lights, without moving a muscle. After Apple launched the first iPad and iPhone, many companies saw just how successful this market was and rushed to make smartphones in different styles of tablets. Also, the super fast Wi-Fi, we can stream photos, videos, and anything else we want in minutes anywhere in the world with the new iCloud storing system. We can gather our photos from anywhere in the world, as I mentioned earlier, and it's just, it's just mind-boggling. Sending these things to, another, to other people isn't hard either. If we want, we can contact someone in America in five seconds flat. You're talking about social networking, right? 
precisely, probably the number one revolutionary invention you can now virtually contact, speak to, and make arrangements with anyone, anywhere in the world. We are all connected to each other over the wonder of the internet. Sharing photos has never been easier either now. Either now first, yeah. Sharing photos has never been easier now with our loved ones in other countries can see what we're getting up to and even talk to them face to face with Skype. Although with this, it does have its dangers. You have to stay safe. If you're on the internet and you never, you never meet anyone on there without your parents at least. <laughs> Wise words there from our expert Douglas. Thank you for coming and speaking to us. No, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. Goodbye. Okay, thank you, Cara. Over to Acadia now with her story. Talk about YouTube making videos and how to survive it. So YouTube, everyone uses it, but why? Let's find out. I love watching the YouTubers like Daniel Fire and Zareli. I've even got some advantage to buy merchandise for me now. But here are my tips on surviving YouTube. Number one, don't make boring videos explaining just how much you love Justin Bieber. Make interesting sketches or just film some anecdotes. Number two, beware of the trolls. They lurk around the YouTube comments feeding off of other people's reactions. This is a reconstruction of actual events that actually happen. Oh, and that Dad's not on fire, it's a total idiot, bruv. He's so stupid, he just got an emo. <laughs> what are you on about? How dare you talk about Dan like that? He is so not an emo. Dan is off for life. Carmen, stop feeding trolls. Didn't you see the sign? And finally, number three, please, please, if you're serious about this, get a decent camera. There's nothing worse than a webcam that buzzes when you talk. That's all I can suggest to you for now, so happy YouTubing. Back to you in the studio, Chris. That's all we have time for tonight, unfortunately, but thank you for watching SBN News. Goodbye. <laughs>